it's recording. And with that, I will leave our speakers. Thank you, uh, Gabriella. So uh, let me start by introducing our faculty team out here. Uh, my name is Kumar Raman Sentel. I guess we had a glitch. Yes, it seems like he's frozen. Oh, yeah. perfect, perfect timing. <clears throat> <laughs> I know. One of the reasons why I chose Academia is to bring the industrial point of view and to help people with their careers. Uh, Professor Jane? Kumar, would you mind repeating that? You were cut off and frozen for a little bit, and I feel like you were probably talking, but we couldn't hear. Uh, no, <laughs> I was <would> saying, <laughs> yeah, that uh, looks like today is a day for technical glitches especially for computer students, computer science majors. So uh, I was saying that uh, before joining the academia, I was in the data analytics industry, specifically in finance. And one of the major drivers for me, uh, besides educating, is also to find people a common ground between the industry and academia. Professor Jane? Oh, uh, I was going to ask Hunter. OK. Oh, Hunter. Um, so hello. Um, I, see, I see some current and former students here, so it's nice to see you again. Um, I am, uh, I've been a professor in the math and computer science department since 2008. Um, my, my PhD is in mathematics. Uh, after college, I, I triple majored in math, computer science, and philosophy. And between college and graduate school, I worked as a programmer in industry um, for a bank called Abian Amro that was nationalized by the Dutch during the 2008 collapse. Um, but, but mostly I'm an academic mathematician. And so I'm, I'm very grateful to have people like Kumar and Shweta and Doug here who are much more in touch with the, uh, the current working world and computer science than myself. Um, but uh, <clears throat> so I expect to learn some things too. I always try to listen to our alums and connect with them on, on LinkedIn and see what they're up to. Um, and I, I look forward to, you know, trying to keep better track of, of what happens to people as they come out of John Jay so we can help optimize the traje trajectory of the students we currently have. Okay, I can go next. Uh, I've been teaching at CUNY since 2010. Before I started at John Jay in 2016, I was at York College. Um, I have a PhD in computer science. My bachelor's degree is in engineering. Uh, between academia uh, and uh, finishing my PhD, I was at a startup company developing embedded software for uh, wireless USB, a technology that never took off because Bluetooth was uh, considered better and also in the uh, wireless industry, politics is higher than technology. Uh, if you Google ultra wide band, you will find out what what that is and uh, how that uh, how that is in many ways better than Bluetooth 3.0. But uh, that's that's me. I'd like okay. So what else? I I teach at the graduate uh, uh, course. I I teach the graduate courses for. Uh, I've been doing that for a few years now. I but I will return to undergraduate teaching. I've taught data structures and algorithms before. Um, I also keep in touch with the alums. Uh, I, I have, we have an open house this uh, evening and we have two of our great al alumni coming, uh, coming to the meeting. And I'm wearing white today for a special reason. Doug Smith, next. Hey, good day everybody. I am Doug Smith. I have a bachelor's in criminal justice and a master's in cybersecurity. I've been at John Jay now for a little, under a year, I teach um, <clears throat> cyber criminology at the graduate level. Before John Jay, I worked in the military as a military intelligence operative, uh, specifically working with computer systems. So can't really go into much there, but I do have a fairly well-versed cybersecurity background. And I, in addition to teaching, run the TTP program at John Jay, which is meant to give 
students a clearer path towards uh, jobs in the modern uh, environment in New York. So Doug right. didn't do uh, justice to himself. Uh, he was our master's student. He graduated from the D4CS program, and he also took uh, undergraduate courses uh, at John Jay to prepare himself for the graduate program. That's all also true, yes. <laughs> now I'll share my screen. Uh, I'm just going to walk very fast just to give an introduction of what our department is and few aspects of what uh, the career options that uh, you have. Can you see my screen? Yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. So, Math and Computer Science Department. It's in a very, if I have to say it in a few words, that's about just not a general computer science department, but we deep dive in technical aspects, specifically computer security. Now we cover both your, the traditional courses that you would find in a computer science department, but we also specifically have courses that focuses on computer security. Now, besides that, you can minor in math, mathematics and computer science. And also, we have applied math major with a focus on data science and cryptography. Well, our focus is information security. Our faculty, we have 26 plus full-time faculty members. Major coordinator is me. The list of advisors is put here, but if you go to our uh, computer science website, you will find all the information you need, and you can reach out to any of us with any questions that you have. Our minor coordinator is Matluba, it's listed here. And so if you are thinking of minoring in computer science, she will be a great resource. This, as I mentioned in the couple of slides back, the our computer uh, department as a major covers the basics programming. So if you want to pursue a career in software engineering or software programming, Yes, we provide you that, but we go beyond that. We provide you specialized topics, specialized courses in cryptography, crypto analysis, network security, and that's what makes John Jay's computer science department stand out. And of course, we have a lot of special topics if you're interested in blockchain, artificial intelligence, and so on. For people who are looking for <clears throat> A practical aspect, we have the Capstone Research Project, which is a, which lets you go in depth in preparing for your jobs in computer security and uh, forensics also. Besides that, you if you come to our department, you'll find out that we have lots of seminars that is focused on cyber crime studies. Like Professor Jane mentioned, we also offer a master's program within John Jay. So if you finish your bachelor's and you are interested to pursue further, we are able to provide you that opportunity also. Then this is uh, for tutoring and other resources. We have it right in our department on the sixth floor for both math, science, and the computer science and, and data and stats. All right, what are the other things you can do? In our department, we have a couple of clubs, and one is the Computer Science Society Club. The other one, a very important one, is John Jay Women in Technology Club. Now, the purpose of these clubs is to bring together both students and faculty who have similar interests. Kind of creating a synergy where you can work with a bigger community to further your ambition, further your career. Finally, we all come to college for a couple of reasons. Either you want to do further studies or you want to get a job. So in terms of careers, our John Jay is a 2x college. What does it mean? It is an initiative that whose purpose is to double the number of computer science graduates by 2023. 
the purpose is so that we can within our own ecosystem of new york city we can be able to satisfy the needs of computer science so for that uh, doug will talk about uh, tech tech talent pipeline which is a partnership of this 2x besides that we have program advisor one of that is doug we help students with getting internships we have boot camps to get them ready for the skill that they need to perform in the job uh, I, last year i think we we put in like 220 plus students in startup companies for internships to summarize computer science department is a very very vibrant student and faculty community we are always available to advise you to help with what you need we have dedicated resources not only to succeed in college but also to help you find your next step that is a career that is the conclusion of uh, my short presentation uh, i wanted to show a video if that's okay that we had prepared for our open house so just let me give me a minute Interesting. All right, I'm not able to find the video for some reason, so I'm just gonna. Uh, we'll stop here. I'll play the video in the end, uh, but uh, we can start with the Q and A. And uh, no, I think uh, Doug had a presentation. Oh yes, sorry, Doug. I'm so sorry. Uh, no worries. I don't have a full slide deck because it is a fairly lengthy one, but I can talk. Really briefly on the DP program, it is like um, <clears throat> President Ramasanta was saying, a CUNY 2X initiative. It is uh, a three month program that is really more of a year long program. What it is, is meant for junior level computer science students and higher as a prep to get you directly into the career that you're looking for. The goal, of course, is to teach skills, both professional and technical, in order to prepare students to be more competitive in the computer science job market, which is, as was previously mentioned, one of the goals of New York City to become that new hub. Now, we do that by, again, offering workshops during the school year, during the terms. Uh, and during the winter term, there is a boot camp, if you're part of the program that you will be a part of, that will teach you a lot more of those technical skills in order to prep you for a summer internship. These internships are paid for by the city, and they are with a number of different employer partners that we have from around the city. Now, most of these are uh, software development, web development type companies, but because John Jay is focused more on the cybersecurity aspect of things, we've been working pretty hard to get more partners that are more focused on the securities aspect. <clears throat> Again, this is a program meant for junior level and senior level students, which means that part of that is that you should have had data or data structures and or algorithms already in your uh, curriculum by the time you get here, because they are foundational courses to whatever it is that we do uh, in the boot camp and beyond. <clears throat> and again, if you have more questions about that, I'm here to answer any of those, and uh, I'm always available through email as well. Thank you, Doug. All right, we can start the q and I'll link it in the chat in a moment. Uh, and Gabriella, you can maybe after this is over, uh, you can send that link to all the folks who had registered. Uh, For those that are unaware, 
We are currently in the application process right now. Uh, that is closed, however, on Friday. So if you are interested and haven't already applied, now would be the time to do so. So I heard Doug mention something about GitHub, and this is something that came up in the applied math um, session as well. How can students get started on GitHub? What can they do? So we actually had a workshop last month about GitHub and getting started, and we have that recorded for those that are interested. Uh, but it's fairly simple. You just sign up for the website itself and start building your um, repository with anything that you do, whether it be school or personal projects. And the workshop that we have actually has a lot about how to get started with it so that you can start doing that on your own. And of course, I am always available, but more importantly, we have a career coach that specifically deals one-on-one -on -one with all the students that are interested in a part of this, in being a part of this project or program that can more closely assist those that uh, decide to reach out to her. And her name is Tishan Hussain. And I will put her email as well in the chat. And of course, man. <laughs> so I have another question since um, we're here. What can, what types of positions can our um, computer science students get upon graduation and what can they do in the meantime in addition to GitHub um, to prepare for this and in addition to TTP? Kumar, you wanna handle this one or uh, just anybody throw it out there? Uh, I think you're on mute, actually. Oh, sorry. I'm on mute. Uh, sorry, Hunter, you're, you're about to say. I was about to say you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, so it'd be, I, I don't want to list all the possible options. Uh, what I want to specifically mention is that if somebody is interested in, say, database, or if somebody is interested in software programming, full stack programming, they can still do it. We provide all the tools for them to do so. But for folks who are specifically interested in cybersecurity, which is an additional aspect of our computer science department, we have special, uh, specialized courses for that. Uh, the two alumni who are coming in today, one of them is a cybersecurity engineer at uh, Lockheed Martin. The other one is a software engineer at uh, uh, TCS, which is Tata Consultancy Services. So that is not one specific area that you can go to. We, are pro we provide you the option uh, of learning the basics of coding, the basics of database, networking, but also specialized courses. If, you know, yeah. It just... Uh... It occurred to me that in the in the list of, of things to prepare, we mentioned uh, GitHub, GitHub and TTP. Um, TTP leads to an inter internship, but we could also just ex you know say explicitly that getting an internship is probably a good way um, to get to get your foot in the door and get some work experience. And um, and I know graduate school is is not for everyone, but I would like to encourage everybody who, um, who might be interested to think about getting a master's degree in computer science. It will pay for itself over the, uh, over the course of your career for sure. And there are a lot of affordable programs out there. And that's another great route to specialization too. You know, we have our own master's program in cybersecurity, but if you're more interested in data science than you, could uh, pursue a master's degree in, in data science or theoretical computer science, or um, even uh, there are lots of programs now that combine computer science with other, other disciplines like the digital humanities or applications of machine learning to sociology. And, and there are just tons and tons of um, specialized programs out there these days. 
So we have a master's in data science at the Graduate Center. We have a master's in digital forensic cybersecurity here at John Jay. Um, there are just a lot of programs, but it would be careful, look through the programs if needed, ask us and we can guide further. I'd also say that those that are, you know, of course at the undergraduate level right now, don't let your current perceived level of skill stop you from doing anything. If you have an interest in doing something, just start researching it, start working on it because there's never really a wrong time to start. If you don't have all the tools you need, I'm sure that we have people that you can talk to about finding those tools or developing them to yourself. Right. And as of Saturday, we have established that we don't need a degree from Yale and Harvard to get the top jobs. <laughs> we, can, we can get the top jobs from wherever we are. What are you thinking of? What? What happened on Saturday? Oh. <laughs> oh, you mean because, the, because Biden went to the University of Delaware? <laughs> and uh, yes, okay. yes, and not Yale or Harvard. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, the vice president elect is uh, is went to an HBCU. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not Columbia University. So, um, students, if you have questions, please ask. Um, while you're thinking of those questions, I have another question for our panelists. Um, what are some places students can go to to find internships? Is there a dedicated website, a database they can um, look into? Should they go to the different companies that may be hiring? If so, what companies could those be, et cetera? Well, I do know that the, a number of the larger companies have their own internship programs. Specifically, we brought somebody from, or we were working with somebody from Amex, American Express recently to give students insights, insight to that very thing. We'll also say though that the bigger companies like Google have their own internship uh, processes and simply by participating in whatever sort of outreach that they do, it puts you on their radar as a potential employee so that when you do decide that you want to apply, apply somewhere like there, they have your information already in their system and it shows them that they are, that you are somebody that they might really be interested in because you've taken the time to actually reach out to them already. As for databases, there are a number of them. Uh, I don't have any offhand that I can just distribute, but I know that there are uh, job listing sites that are specifically, specifically focus on computer science, whatever it may be that you're looking for. It just requires hard work. Uh... Uh, there was there is one of our students who was I would see him every single day after I walk out of my 8 p.m. classroom he would be sitting outside moot court and studying for a Google internship was that Joseph uh, Joseph Brown he, no no Joseph not Joseph it was Kevin oh, okay yeah so from my side uh, I can from personal experience I can say that developing a good network of folks, either you LinkedIn, reach out to your alumni, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because that is where you get an extra finger in the uh, door, right? if for lack of better words. Uh, but sure, you can apply to a lot of places, but more, more importantly, try to improve your network because that comes, that plays a big deal in terms of at least getting you for an interview. So one of our uh, graduate students uh, who graduated, he's, he, he wrote on his LinkedIn profile that he just reached out to somebody for an unpaid internship. And from there, he's now a paid, uh, he's, he's a, he, he has a full-time offer. Louise, I can tell you personally that it really all depends on you. I was working full-time while I was going to John Jay with for my master's program and it was it was fairly challenging but more it was just time management I didn't have a ton of time for extra fun stuff but I was there you know learn get that get that master's done um the workload is significant enough to you know make you work but it's not impossible in any way shape or form I teach the graduate classes most of our students are have full-time jobs 
and they are unrelated to sometimes our cyber fields. So, you know, so that's, it becomes even more challenging. Yeah, there were a number of uh, fellow students that were doing complete career shifts and it's like, oh, so this is, yes. this is real work. Okay. Yeah. And some employers will contribute toward your tuition too. Yes. You might ask if that's a benefit. We have had that too. If you get an A minus, you get a full tuition waiver. If you get B, then you get 70% reimbursement, not waiver, reimbursement. We have another question um, from one of the students. For the internship class in CS, I'm assuming it's a major, um, CSIS, do we have to find our own internship or are we connected with one? So they want to know if they need to find their own internship for the internship class or, are they, or they're given a list. Um, how do they go about finding that internship? So okay, I'll, I'll start it off with uh, one that we have is that uh, tech talent pipeline, right? Uh, and Doug can talk more about it. But uh, besides that, we can help you with bootcamp and with preparation, resume preparation. But I do not know in terms of uh, finding it other than the tech talent pipeline. Doug, I mean, I'm... as far as I know, the course that's actually that I think they're referring to. That is one that you have to find yourself. I have talked to Dr. Selene because this has come up with some of the other previous TTP um, students. Mm -hmm. Those, there is a possibility that if you are part of TTP, you can get credit as well as just the regular internship. Uh, we just have to coordinate with the department in order to do that. But for the class itself, if you're not a part of TTP, I do believe that you have to find your own internship by your own methods. And uh, earlier we mentioned connecting with fellow students on, on LinkedIn. Um, I, I make an effort to connect with, uh, with John Jay graduates on LinkedIn. If you're looking for a place to get started, you're welcome to friend me or some other faculty member or somebody else who's been affiliated with John Jay for a long time might be a good place to browse um, some of our alumni network on, on LinkedIn and see what people are doing. And you can always reach out to them with the chat and say, you know, hello, fellow John Jay grad. Is there anything going on at your company that maybe I could help with? There is also a John Jay alumni relationship. You can friend them, definitely friend them. Actually, uh, I'd like to tack on to that. Just greater outreach on LinkedIn in general. It's a great resource, especially for those of you that aren't sure where you want to go. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we tell the students at the TTP program when they're curious about it, that they should reach out to people in the field that they're looking at just to see if they can get in touch with them and get an idea of what that actually looks like so it can help the student better figure out if that's what they actually want to do. And if it's not, then they can start looking elsewhere at other aspects of computer science and maybe start re-dedicating uh, their time and attention there. So and just, that goes for master's and PhD programs as well. And just don't be afraid to reach out to people. Mm -hmm. that's, LinkedIn is there for that very thing. Reach out to faculty if you are applying to a master's or a PhD program. Yeah, the, the reason Shweta is saying that is, is you might know that some of those programs are, are predatory boot, boot camps and, uh, and non-reputable master's programs that uh, are just looking to, uh, to get paid through, um, through possibly some scholarship mechanism or possibly through yeah money that you yourself contribute. So be careful. Question is, is a PhD necessary for computer science majors? No. You're not what do you recommend pursue a PhD? Sorry? Say what that again. What do you recommend um, pursue a PhD in computer science? Under what circumstances would a PhD would be necessary? Uh, if you know the, the research jobs and faculty jobs, uh, you know, tenure track jobs, uh, those are where you, you definitely need a PhD. If you want to work for a national lab, um, one of you want to work for NASA, if you want to work for Google research, or even Google as a senior software engineer, um, if you want to start your own company. 
if, you, if you're just looking to maximize lifetime earnings, um, yes. it's probably not, I mean, PhD is probably not going to increase, increase your expected lifetime earnings. But if you're passionate about computer science, it's not a bad way to spend six or seven years. Right. Um, we also have another question from a student, um, a student, ooh, another student answered, but I also wanted to get your input. Uh, are the computer science clubs and women in technology clubs meeting virtually? If so, who can students contact? If you know, is there a faculty coordinator that helps these clubs? If so would that be a good I, I don't know who's the faculty coordinator right now. Uh, I know Professor Dietrich used to be the faculty coordinator for the CSS. I'll have to find out, but the students who are, let me see if I have an email from them that I can copy. There's a, yeah, Sonic, Sonica Lama, it seems like she's very Sonica. active. Mm there is, okay, so there's a most recent email which has a Zoom link and they are meeting when? Oh, November 2nd, it's passed. Um, okay, so they have a website and they even have an Instagram. So let me just copy that stuff over. There it is. So I put it in the chat. That's the Computer Science Society. I haven't seen anything from JJ Witt for some time. Hannah Williams used to handle that. Well, if you reach CSS, you'll reach JJ Witt as well. They work together. Students, do any of you have any other questions? What do you guys want to do? Maybe we can stop recording and then the students can talk freely. You can apply to the program and uh, you know give give us your uh, recommendation letters and um, a personal statement. Have a good GPA and uh, we look at your application and you know there's no special preparation. GRE is waived for all John Jay graduates, computer science graduates. What languages okay. do you recommend students focus? on learning while they're at John Jay? Well, the big two would definitely be C++ and Python. They're kind of transferable to pretty much anywhere else you really want to go. Um, beyond that, it really depends on what you're looking for, like web development, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React. Um, development, you can look at things like Node, um, start looking at SQL. Do you recommend if you're writing a large software sorry uh if you're writing a large software it's no longer one language so if it's let's say you're writing a uh, writing a program uh for an app for, for a mobile phone like you're writing an app for android you don't need to know java and you need to know xml if you're writing a full if you're doing a full stack development I can give you an example. You can you need React JS, you need Golang, you need to know Linux. Don't forget Linux and don't be afraid of Linux. And Wireshark to debug your full stack application. That's the thing. There's a lot of languages. Um as a follow-up, do you recommend in addition to courses that students um look into these massive online open courses as a way to learn languages or what else could they do to learn and practice these languages? Well, there are uh, 
based on few courses, for example, data analytics, uh, oh, sorry, database and data mining, uh, we teach SQL and some Python. And there are courses, courses focused on C++, right? Besides that, uh, I'm pretty sure if the best way to do it is pick up a project and you can find a bunch of them in GitHub's, pick up a project and try to solve it in the language that you want to. That, that I think instead of just going through a bunch series of lectures, the best way to do, especially when it comes to programming is practice, do it on your own. So just looking into LinkedIn, I found that when during the COVID time, uh, people were simply picking up open data and doing analysis. And they were mostly using Python and they wanted their data to be available, their visualization to be available online. So they were uh, using a combination of technologies to make it available online. Uh, for my part, I'd say final statements is whatever it is you're interested in, in computer sciences, don't hesitate to start focusing on that while you're in school. You can develop your skills in, throughout your entire career, but if you don't start at least early, you're not going to be exactly sure where it is you want to go with that. So figure out what it is you want to do or what you may want to do and just start pursuing it. So to add on to that, uh, your faculty in the computer science department is a big resource. So any questions come to us, we are there to help you with that. And like I mentioned, alumni network is a big source for you uh, in getting into the career. So keep these two things in mind uh, when you're looking at what you want to do, whether you want computer science or what type of job you want. I, I would say, um, speaking for myself and others uh, that I've observed be very successful, and I, I think probably a lot of the, uh, the other faculty members here, almost everything that I know is self-taught. And um, like Kumar was saying, being a, being a technologist is, is largely just a matter of practice. And uh, you don't need anybody's permission you know, to put uh, Linux on a virtual machine or take an uh, online class or read through an O'Reilly book or um, try to contribute to some project on GitHub. Um, the, the best thing that you can do if you have the time is just get out there and do something. And you'll get better and you'll develop new interests and, um, and you'll get a lot of marketable skills at the same time. And if it's something that you find interesting also, well then that is uh, extra good. My final thoughts on this, uh, and it actually combines everything you guys have said. Um, I have seen students who are so focused on that 4.0, they would do not even one bit of work outside the classroom. All they want is that A. My best students are the ones who had a 3.3 or a 3.0. And they tend to get the best recommendations from me because they not only work for the classroom, but they did extra work outside the classroom and they convinced me that they actually knew what they were doing. Cool, so we do have one more question. What is the difference between cybersecurity and cyber crime? They might be talking about the programs at John Jay. You know, we have a, a cyber crime minor. Um, oh, N not our department, right? Yeah, it's it's so it's basically there's a cyber crime program. I'm, I forget the department that it's in, but it's basically about the law. Whereas we would teach you um, like forensic technical skills, they would teach you more about the legal aspects of cyber crime. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. So my question, like I'm 